Hi, I'm Ryan. And I'm Jet. And this is Popcorn Time. Welcome to Rhyme City. Put down the stapler or I will electrocute you. Oh my god, you can understand me. The most anticipated movie this week is, of course, Pokemon Detective Pikachu. This episode, we're looking at why Detective Pikachu is the right Pokemon movie for this moment. But first, here are three other movies also opening this week. Brightburn, a horror movie that asks the question, what if Superman wore Damien from The Omen? Because really, the most terrifying thing would be one of the greatest superheroes becoming a villain. You are a gift. Uh, sort of taking the innocence and optimism of a savior, a superhero coming in to rescue us and turning that on its head into something horrifying. And mention needs to be made for David Yerevesky, the director, because uh, he's kind of being overshadowed by James Gunn right now. An added connection to James Gunn's pre-Guardians of the Galaxy career is the presence of Elizabeth Banks as a star of this movie who plays the mother of the boy and in the trailer we see that she's always wanted a son. Do you son. even know who his real mother is? I'm his real mother. But then when her wish is granted, what might look like a blessing turns out to be a curse. <laughs> you are different. Caitlin, get my hand up. He's a creep. Help him up. What are you doing? Also opening this week is King of Thieves, a movie that unites a band of geriatric criminals whom you don't want to mess with. Okay. Ten. What? He's deaf as a post. I'm basically seeing a very uh, classy take on the Expendables here. Seeing people who are known for their own little uh, franchises and they're all coming together. You know, we're going to see all men do badass things. Kind of like out of character but fun. It's a lovely vault, that. Yeah, look at that cast list, right? It's Michael Caine, Michael Gambon, Ray Winstone, Jim Broadbent, plus Charlie Cox from Daredevil. In addition to that, it's based on a true story, a heist that took place in 2015. So relatively recent, but it's really captured the imagination of the public. It was a conscious effort to unite the greatest train robbers, ex-cons, so all of these guys have a rap sheet. And they're in their 70s and 80s, and they're uniting for their last big hurrah. <laughs> Do you think he's dead? Let's go. To <laughs> this week we also have The Hustle, featuring Anne Hathaway and Rebel Wilson as con women in a heist comedy. Because no man will ever believe a woman is smarter than he is. Is it valuable? $500,000. I like it because it's shiny. So it might not be super obvious at first, but this movie is a remake. It's a remake of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels starring Steve Martin and Michael Caine, which is in turn a remake of Bedtime Stories. Starring Marlon Brando, also riding the all-female remake train. I like Ocean's Eight, and Anne Hathaway was in it, so she's kind of like bringing forward that little heist bit with her. Anne Hathaway and Rebel Wilson have very different styles of comedy, but it looks like those styles might be complementary. I could be the partner he never knew needed. Teach me your sugar baby ways. Wilson is very familiar with the theme of women being underestimated. Is the writer Jack Schaefer? This isn't actually her first movie with female like cast. She's done Captain Marvel. And she will be doing Black Widow soon. At one point, the movie was announced as being called Nasty Women. Let's look up where that's from. If you want to be like me, you must be trained for any situation. She's ready. The most anticipated movie this week is Pokemon Detective Pikachu. So join us as we look at how Detective Pikachu is the right Pokemon movie for this moment. Pika Pika Pika, he's adorable. You're adorable. They can't understand me, kid. Can no one else hear him? So I'm not as familiar with Pokemon as, as you are. I didn't really grow up with it, but I even I'm aware of the craze that was Pokemon Go and of everyone running around looking for certain characters that are harder to find than others and how watching this trailer for a lot of people has been like a spot the Pokemon kind of game. Obviously, a lot of reasons to be excited for this, but what I'm really looking forward to is hearing Ryan Red as Pikachu, the person who's Deadpool. Yeah, there's a novelty in the incongruity of hearing his voice, a wise-cracking, smart-ass voice coming out of something that's really cute. This story at its heart, it's a detective story. The character of Pikachu, or Detective Pikachu, is looking for his human companion and comes across the guy's son, played by Justice Smith. We're gonna do this. It's a very coming of age story which is great because that's at the heart of all the Pokemon adaptations that's always been there. Honestly, I think this is probably the closest we're ever going to come to a live action Pokemon movie. And another thing that's kind of enticing is the wish fulfillment factor. The setting of Rhyme City, a world in which Pokemon and humans coexist. Like there's a Snorlax who's taking a nap on a street corner and nothing's weird about that. I love the neon kind of aesthetic. It kind of uh, has a feel where it's 21st century take on 1920s Chicago. You know, you do feel like 
you know, in the shadows might be a mob or something. Yeah, that serves to just amp up the whole detective uh, aspect of it. RJ Palmer created these realistic Pokemon designs, Pokemon designs that were a little bit more influenced by photoreal mm. art, and he went on to become a concept artist. What I think is pretty cool with how Detective Pikachu is being angled is that it's not being angled as a video game movie. Even with something like Warcraft, which could have been very much like a new Lord of the Rings, but they chose to angle it as a video game movie. And this kind of gives me more faith in the movie because it's not trying to be gimmicky in that sense. Well, a lot of people might accuse Ryan Reynolds for being like a stunt cast. I, I, I think it's just he's a, he's a very appropriate voice by virtue of being inappropriate. Very recently, we had Rocket Raccoon and before that, we had Ted. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing, right? So we, we are basically getting a kind of a... Yeah, it's a character who is endearing, but also has a bit of a mischievous side. Just not like cookie cutter cute. From what little I know about this, the Pikachu we're seeing in this movie is not the Pikachu that everyone might be familiar with. Pikachu, after all, it, it is a species, the one from the anime that's owned by Ash. Yeah, that's a different one. It's not that this Pikachu is able to speak. So he's kind of like a bridge between the two worlds. He's not outright speaking English like say Mia oh, okay. from the animated series. Sure. Maybe we might for the first time start hearing what Pokemon are actually thinking. The speech that we hear from Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu is exclusive to the main character's perspective. To the rest of the world, he is still just randomly saying Pika Pika. 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 Don't need a Pokemon. Period. And what about a world-class detective? Because if you want to find your pops, I'm your best bet. Regardless of when you became a Pokemon fan, Detective Pikachu seems to have a little bit of something for everyone. Be sure to get your tickets on Popcorn and stand a chance to win some cool Pokemon swag. I'm Jed. I'm Ryan. Thank you for joining us on Popcorn Time.